pain in marijuana because we believe they can distort time perception by compressing time or lengthening time. Hi, Ray. Is everything ready? Hi, Ron. Yes, everything's ready. Good, let's go. He's going to test whether these chemicals change the stopwatch mechanism that allows the rats to measure time. So the rats have had their drugs for about 20 minutes now. As you can see, the marijuana rat is mellowed out. The cocaine rat's gotten quite mad and is trying to escape out of this cage here. And the saline rat is just acting normally. The plan is to give the animals a timing task. The rats have previously been trained to measure time precisely. If the rat presses a lever after 12 seconds, he gets the reward of a food pellet. But if he's too early or too late, he gets nothing. The rat, given saline only, does this task perfectly and presses the lever after 12 seconds, the correct time. Next, the rat on cocaine. For this rat, time seems to zip by. It presses the lever after only eight seconds. And lastly, the rat on marijuana. Here, time seems to have ground to a halt. This rat doesn't press until 16 seconds have passed. So overall, we're seeing a modulation of the stopwatch, where we can speed up our stopwatch and slow down the stopwatch, or we can maintain normal speed under control conditions. So it seems that our very real experience of time speeding up or slowing down can be directly influenced by chemicals. And this could account for what's happening in the free fall. Under high stress, we release adrenaline, and this, just like a drug, affects the chemical pathway of our stopwatch, slowing down time. It seems that even our sense of time passing, something that seems so much a part of the outside world, is an internal process, a fundamental part of our psychology. But not all our sense of time can come from within. As a physicist, I know that the external world dictates the way time flows. Uh, thank you. I'd like a, um, a black coffee. Black coffee, please. And that surely has to have an impact on the way we experience it. In some sense, we are prisoners of time. You can't escape it. You can't jump out of time. You can't stop time. And so then the question is, what is it? One thing we know is that time always marches forward. It never falters or freezes. These rules seem obvious, but in fact, it isn't immediately clear how or why they come about. Well, when I was learning physics for the first time, I had, I had the shock of my life when I suddenly realized that the laws of physics do allow you to go backwards in time. There's nothing in the laws of physics that says that time has to go forward. 
And so then the question is, why does time run forward and not backward? It is possible, technically speaking, that everything could be run in reverse. The reason we don't see time reverse in real life isn't because it's impossible, only very, very improbable. So we can't reform a broken cup, or for that matter, undo the memories of it breaking. It is so improbable that it's not going to happen in your lifetime, or for that matter, the lifetime of the universe. There is a remarkable consequence to this. The past is always fixed in our memories, and the future is yet to come. And this creates our crucial human awareness of the arrow of time, of past, present, and future. This understanding has long been regarded as uniquely human. But recently, that's been thrown into question. Meet King, the gorilla. Here at Monkey Jungle in Miami, an experiment is underway to find out if King has any understanding of past, present, and future. There is a notion that animals are stuck in the present and cannot think to the past or anticipate the future. The most recent research that we've been doing is investigating King's memory for specific events in the past. So we're trying to see what King can recall from his past experiences. In one experiment, he witnesses an incident outside his cage. Good morning. How are you doing? King's doing good. He's had a great morning. He's been out exercising outside. Look at him over. He looks really good today. Yes, it's very hot. My phone. His keepers want to see if he can remember who was involved. A few hours later, he's shown a guerrilla version of an identity parade. King has already been trained on this task. But will he remember which of these people he saw? King. They have high hopes. Can you tell me who took your phone? Oh, my goodness, Heather took your King phone. King chooses Heather, the real culprit. It seems he has remembered what happened. Thank you. Until he suddenly seems to think that everybody was involved. The results are equivocal but his researchers aren't put off. In my opinion, I believe that great apes do have memory, um, and I believe that we will eventually be able to demonstrate this. But even if they succeed, no one doubts that the most impressive performers of the animal world fall far short of our human awareness of time. The whole of human society is built around our ability to comprehend time as the past, present, and future. <laughs>